Hello, my hardcore people. And by hardcore, I mean you people that watch these things on a regular basis. I figured I better pop on here and say howdy because it's been a long time uh, since I fell and stuck that screw in my hand. And I hurt the whole right side of me, like all the way down my neck, my shoulder, into my arm, and, and my hand. Like, yeah, my hand is finally not sore where that screw went in, but it took a long time. And, uh, yeah, I think I popped on here to say, like, oh, I'm not hurt that bad. And I was kind of wrong. Uh, I was kind of hurt worse than I thought. But anyways, I don't know how long it's been since I've been on here. It's been a while. Uh, but I've been taking, like, a lot less volume, which may maybe what's messing with me but I really haven't been feeling very well and uh, my sleep's been disrupted I'm not I don't have a good like sleep schedule where I sleep and all in one fell swoop I even fell asleep on the Browns game yesterday I woke up and I wanted to go back to sleep but <laughs> I woke up and I was like man what the hell's going on it's 20 to 10 we're losing to the Jets what because it's kind of important for me for them to uh, win out. And then the Steelers somehow righted themselves because I watched the first half of the Steelers game. And it looked like they were going to lose. And they were getting dominated by the Colts. And they came back in the second half and the Colts only scored three points. So yesterday was sort of disastrous for me because I got like, you know, I could make like thousands of dollars if the Browns do well and if specific players do well. And uh, I don't want to talk too much football, but like at the last minute, the linebacker for the Browns, uh, whose name is Goodson, was tested positive for COVID and then the entire receiving core went out, like the top four receivers that we had, uh, but we still should have won the game. And it's just, you know, we got like a bad call and played horrible. Anyways, you don't care about that, probably. Um, I care about that because it's going to cost me a lot of money, and it was not good. So anyways, we had a major storm hit here on Christmas Eve, like seven inches of snow. And the temperature went from uh, season, see, unseasonably warm to a low of 14. So the last time I invited my cat in, he was like, nope. I'm not coming in and it was like 29 or something like that outside and it was going to drop down to 20. And I'm like, well, I'll give the old man a break and let him in the house. And uh, so he was like, nope, not with you standing there. I'm not coming in. So I went and hid in my bedroom, like I said. And then he came in and then uh, I came out and was throwing pieces of cheese to him and he wasn't even tracking him with his eyes. He was just glaring at me evilly. And then uh, he was like, well, if I have to choose between you and the cold, I'm taking the cold. But that was a, a couple of weeks before Christmas. Now, on Christmas Eve, he was, I was like, the snow hit, you know? And I was like, man, I hope he's out there. And uh, I actually saw uh, the gray cat who was, uh, I accidentally feed sometimes out there. But he was running around, like, panicking. He or she, I don't know which. But uh, it was looking for some kind of shelter. It was like that. You know, they know that something major is going down. My cat was like hunkered down in the corner and getting snowed on. And I looked down at him and I was like, hey, man, what's up? What you doing, man? You don't want to be out here. Why don't you come around front and come in the house and get warm? And I talked nice to him from like 15 feet up. And then uh, uh, I went and opened the thing and I rang the bell and he shot past me in a blur he wasn't hesitate hesitating at all I just left him alone and like the last time I shut the window and I think it made him panicky or something like that because he was shut in the house and he didn't want to use the litter box in here I don't think even though I got a perfectly good litter box set up so 
he was meowing to get outside and I was like trying to touch him or pet him while he was and he was doing this like not letting me touch him while I was and I was like I opened the window and he jumped outside and left but this time like uh, when I he stayed in the house for mm, almost three days and uh, I just left the window propped open at night I was like I don't give a fuck if anything gets stolen I was like I'll leave the window propped open and I don't care if it's 14 degrees out because that's that's what the low was two nights in a row it was 14 degrees I was like uh, I'm in here anyway and then uh, I had the window propped open you know just enough for a cat to jump in and out and he didn't use the litter box at all so I think that was his issue I don't know but anyways um, it actually got cold in here from me just leaving the window open for like two days and in, in uh, bad weather and I had to break out a second heater that uh, was stuck in the closet because I couldn't you know, I was like man it's cold in here it's like yeah no shit it's cold in here I thought you know since I have a door between me and the other place it doesn't matter if I have the window open uh, because I don't have a thermostat the thermostat to this place is in another part of the uh, apartments it's in, it's in Roy's apartment and there's like uh, two doors between that three doors actually if you count you count the outside door and then you got the lobby area and then you got my door and you got his door that's three doors so it doesn't really matter but the building has got at least two busybodies in it that would say hey Steve's been leaving the window open to the landlord and the landlord I thought about that and I was like I don't care you know those floorboards are rattling really good and she's walking on yeah I'm having trouble breathing I got this new thing I'm I don't know what it is, but I'm just going to stop eating before I go to sleep. That's like a bottle of honey, like right there. And um, so I got a little bit hungry. I was hungry and sleepy, but I'm just going to stop trying to eat before I go to sleep. So I had these like cinnamon waffle things that uh, Global Meals gave me. And I, you know, heated them up and I put that honey on top of them and was eating them, you know. I don't know what to compare that sort of behavior to, but uh, I have one plate and I didn't feel like washing it. So I put the damn, the damn waffles on a paper towel and then I put them on top of my heater and that's how I cooked my waffles, okay? And then I put honey on top of them. Well, I got this thing where I can only sleep on my back because of my medical conditions and lately I'm getting acid reflux and I think what's happening is I'm aspirating stomach acids, which means like stuff is coming up and I'm breathing it in because man my throat is fucked up and I don't really feel like talking uh, and it's like you have to resist the urge to cough so I'm drinking a bunch of milk and I'm drinking like baking soda water and I'm eating like uh, just plain bread and stuff trying to help my stomach out but it's really not a stomach issue it's like like I said it's if I eat too close to when I go to sleep uh, or drink even just drink something I'm laying on my back and like stomach acids come up and like I breathe them in I don't even know what that is acid reflux I have no idea I just know that the next day I can't breathe too good and uh, my throat hurts that's where I'm at right now so I'm not gonna be talking for no hour uh, yeah so it's hurting right now so but it was cool to have the cat in and you know like I said he let me pet him I don't know if I said that or not but he let me pet him while I was feeding him and he was coming around me and shit and I'm like I don't really want that because I don't want him to have trouble throwing him back out but when I fell asleep on the Browns game yesterday I woke up and he wasn't in the house because it, we had a, a warm up you know, it got cold on Thursday, and then we had a warm-up on Sunday. And, uh, you know, as a matter of fact, I was hearing icicle, icicles crash. Because it, it, we had a little bit of rain at, like, 44-degree rain. 
it was melting the icicles and I was hearing these huge crashes three times outside my window last night. I was up pretty late. Um, so I was pleased that he was out of the house and uh, I bought like um, tennis balls to put and I put them on the like you're supposed to on the bottom of walkers so it doesn't make that squeaky noise when I when I I'm, I'm gonna have to start like walking with a walker whether I want to or not because uh, I have a lot of days where I don't breathe so good and um, I don't know I think I counted 65 or something like that on them, the amount of uh, 62 some, something like 62 to 65 pills it was in the 60s on my volume and uh, it's set to be refilled on the 6th so you know I expect to be like anywhere from 35 to 45 pills ahead but it seems like I'm paying a price for it you know I don't know I mean the thing of it is is like I had one night where I took more pills and I didn't go to sleep so like instead I, I've been chopping them up and taking half of pills I, I just like took a whole pill and I took like uh, gabapentin on top of it and melatonin on top of that and I was still awake I just couldn't sleep and I remember it was a Monday and I was up until like 7 30 in the morning and I'm like if I'm up at 8 o'clock in the morning I'm canceling the aid worker coming over I, I should cancel the aid worker for tomorrow but uh, I don't know I guess I can cancel it tomorrow depending upon how tonight goes or whatever uh, but yeah things are not groovy um, as you probably know they uh, Trump just for whatever reason delayed on signing the stimulus package so if you're on Social Security and you're watching this, you're probably going to get 600 bucks this week. I don't know. It might already be there. I don't. I don't know. But then they were still dangling the carrot of the two thousand dollars, which I I don't understand the motivation for that. But I'm happy to get the extra six hundred dollars. Um. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what to do with my situation. I don't know, like this new acidity thing that I got going going on is like really uncomfortable, and you can't go back to sleep with it. I usually like wake up with it, like like what you know what the fuck is going on, and I can feel it, like I'm coughing, and then I try to stop coughing because that just makes it worse, and uh, it feels like actually kind of feels like I need to throw up, like I should throw up or whatever I'm like I tried that before it's a weird new thing that I don't need I, mean, I don't know what it is but yeah just more fun games here at the house of Steve um, yeah I'm trying to think like if I have anything else to talk about no I'm kind of worried about where my mental state's getting as far as like wanting to try to find a doctor and, and like go to the doctor and stuff. I need to move around and try to get my body to work better at the very least. There's no time like the present, which presently I'm speaking and laying around and being lazy, but I mean, today I can start and, and do something. Um... I've noticed that like I got new stiffness in my left leg it's like putting on um, clothes getting to be difficult so something's got to be done I got to do something about the flexibility in my legs and um, yeah I'm gonna need to need to go to the doctor maybe now isn't the right time to be dicking around with uh, my volume dosage I don't know and going up generally is not good. They don't tell you to go back up if you go down. So I just like, like I said, I, somebody wrote me a comment on the video uh, yesterday. 
but I had 34 pills left over. And I'm like, oh, I must be doing pretty good. So I started like cutting them, cutting them in half and taking halves, which is only 2.5 milligram doses I've been taking at a time. So uh, that might have something to do with why I feel lousy. I don't understand this whole acidy thing. That might have to do with stress. And, you know, like I didn't see any family or talk to anybody on Christmas at all. And I called a couple of people on Sunday and I didn't, you know, one person had their phone off. The other person didn't answer their phone. So isolation, I guess, naturally brings more stress or whatever. But when I finally did get somebody, I called my brother at 1142 at night. I was like, he sleeps weird hours. And I looked and when he was finally done and wanted to get off the phone. I was on the phone for two hours and 45 minutes with him. And I just let him talk because he sleeps all kind of weird fucking hours and I wasn't sleepy so not that I didn't do some talking myself but I was like at some point I was like I kind of want to get off the phone I mean yeah uh, we don't have sometimes we have good conversations sometimes they're not exactly scintillating so I didn't make a look at the phone I was like oh my god two hours and 45 minutes it's like you know if, it's, if that's not your if that's not the honeymoon period of your girlfriend or your wife, that's too long of a conversation. But, um, yeah. He does talk slow, and I do talk a lot, so maybe it's a bad combination. I don't know. But, um, anyways. Yeah, I guess I, uh, like I said, I have to get started today, and, um, start walking around with the walker and see how my legs respond to it and I might do some stretching I got like a mat I might try to stretch out my legs a little bit the problem is like you know this <laughs> getting my knee up high I remember being in a therapy room a billion years ago and I was working on those parallel bar things and they were telling me to lift my leg up and I remember this there was somebody else there that was said I wish I could get my legs up that high and at the time I didn't think nothing of it it just stored away in my memory that, you know somebody said that because I thought it was a weird comment I kind of understand it now yeah so I don't know if that's tight what kind of tightness that I think that's just tightness in your knee I think this is a knee thing you know it's not like a use your quadriceps to lift up your leg it's not a quadriceps thing it's just the, the flexibility of your knee and I guess I can get on a mat and like I don't know if I'm going to do more damage to myself or not so maybe I shouldn't do that I don't know I don't know what to do this is not a good situation to be in so and the bad part is this like what's like the last help that I got from the medical community was to injure my leg and make it worse so it's probably why I'm putting off getting help from the doctors besides the fact that you know I got issues upon issues um, yeah it's, it's like there's no guarantee they're going to help me they might make it worse uh, but they could help me too or I could be like uh, a little more proactive about it or assertive not proactive proactive would be going there Assertive would be like when I get there, like don't touch my leg or do anything with my leg. Unless I say it's okay, don't just grab hold of my leg and bend it. Because the last guy that did that on September 22nd, like, fucked up my leg. So don't do that. Like, shoot me up with some cortisone, man. See if that helps first before you start messing around with it. But of course, don't want to do x ray. That's not the reason why I don't want to go to the doctor. So it means I'm going to be getting x-rays and MRIs and tests and this and that. It's going to be a whole big hassle. It's not like I can keep on, keep going with the way things are now. The uh, bonus is, you know, I will, they have like eye care. So I will get be able to get like a, 
couple new pairs of glasses and some contacts. And I have enough money to do that now. Even before the uh, uh, 600, extra $600 that's from the stimulus bill. So that's where I'm at. I thought I'd give you a quick, like, uh, I don't know, overview. <laughs> but yeah, my arm was sore for a long time. And I mean, even yesterday, I was like, fuck, my shoulder. Before I started having a problem with the coughing and stuff, I was like, fuck, my shoulder hurts. Why is my shoulder hurting? And I was trying to move my arm in different positions and behind my head and stuff. I'm like, why is my shoulder hurting? But yeah. Uh, that's just too much weight for me to try to catch on one arm when I was falling. But I told that story to uh, my best friend, and he was like, uh, "Yeah, you can't fall in the bathroom because you'll hit your head on the on the bathtub or something." I was like, "Yeah, that's exactly where I was headed. If I would have fell over backwards, I would have cracked the back of my head or my neck on the bathtub." And that would have been uncool, but because I caught myself and impaled my hand on that screw, I fell down on my butt, which is the uh, best place to fall. So I just kind of like fell real hard on my butt because I was able to straighten myself out instead of just going, you know, completely backwards. But anyways, that seems to be okay. I'm gesturing and moving and stuff. I mean, there's still... A little hint of something and I got that old rotator cuff injury that that certainly did not help when I did that it's probably why my shoulder was hurting but uh, on, on a positive note uh, let's see nope <laughs> I don't have many much in the pot on a positive note I got my cat in and out of the weather so that made me feel good and uh, yeah he was in from Christmas Eve all the way till yesterday. So he got to chill and lay in front of the uh, register. And uh, he's back outside and I don't have to deal with him now, which is cool. And um, on the plus side, I guess I'm still breathing. Even if I'm not doing it too well. And I have to learn like not to drink. That's what I was doing is like I wasn't eating anything before I went to sleep and I wasn't drinking anything but water or milk because I would go to sleep and I'm laying like flat on my back and like I said I get I used to be able to lay on my back and like on one side now I lost the ability to sleep on the one side because um, when I would get sick or injured or whatever I'd get in the fetal position and curl up on one side and I or sometimes I would just sleep that way and you know you put the pillow between your knees and stuff and uh, make yourself more comfortable and now I'm down to sleeping on my back that's it and so like I think that's what's happening because your esophagus wait a minute your esophagus is in the back I think and your trachea is in the front yeah so I'm not sure how that works or why that's happening. I just know what's happening. And um, my throat's sore because of it. But I think I covered everything. There's nothing else to cover. So, um, yeah, no amusing stories for you. Uh, no uh, cheery decor or appropriate lighting or um, holiday cheer or anything like that. Uh, yeah just like I said I'm just checking in let you know I'm still around since I haven't been around for a while I just don't have much to say this, there's nothing going on so yeah and I don't know I gotta I guess I got if I want to be talking on here I gotta do something worth talking about so uh, maybe I'll give that a go give that a try it's like oh yeah I went to the doctor and they fucked up my other leg too it'd at least be something to talk about anyways um, yeah I'll see y'all later I hope you're doing well and nobody's falling over any stumps outside or uh, any stumps inside or you know Basically, I hope you're doing okay.
and uh, see if I can, I'm not going to try to manage the smile, I can manage a weird smirk, that's about it, uh, take care of yourself.